every business will have its own reasons for switching to Office 365 or thinking about it. But as a challenge, I've got three experts here, each of whom has two good reasons why they think businesses should switch. First, I've got David Firon, who is a director for Boto Media. Second, Simon May, who is an IT evangelist for Microsoft. And third, Connor, Connor Callanan, who is the CEO of uh, Core. Core technology, so let me get this absolutely right. Core, it's Just fine. Core, so a Microsoft Gold Partner. Uh, so David, let's start with you. What's your, what's your top reason? Um, from my point of view, um, as a small business owner, um, it's basically risk reduction. I mean, the things that keep me awake at night are the fact that it's quite a tough world out there, margins are tight, there's not necessarily much money in the bank. I can't afford any downtime and I can't afford anything that um, reduces my reputation with my clients. So one of the, the things that I really want to do is just get rid of that extra worry, which is data security, um, backup, emails going missing, um, documents disappearing on a flash drive or whatever. That's the reason, that the main reason for me is just offloading it to a, a, a company that I trust, goes into the cloud, somebody else does the job of backing it up, somebody else does the job of just making sure it's always there when I need it. And that's the, the single main thing for me. Okay, and your second big reason? Um, maybe not, it doesn't apply to my particular business at the minute, but certainly if, if, um, if we have more staff in the future, um, the, the, the key thing about a business, the, the key a asset is your staff. And from my point of view, it's just, you know, don't, don't annoy them, keep them happy. And if you give them um, a solution that's uh, some sort of new IT system that they perceive to be just uh, making money for the company or reducing the outlay for the company rather than doing something for them, it just makes them upset. Um, so if we're moving from something they know, i.e. Microsoft Office, which is on, on an installed PC, to something completely different, user interface wise, that's just gonna annoy them. So if I was thinking about moving to a cloud service, I want to go from a user interface that they know to another user interface that they know, and that is Office. And that is, you know, that's applications that they know the names of. It's Word, Excel, it's PowerPoint, it's not something new that they have to get to grips with. It's just everything is just gonna be the same as it was. It's gonna be easier, it's gonna make their lives better. It's not just um, going the other way around and doing things for the company, it's the company doing things for them. That would be my, my second reason. And I suppose the other thing to point out is that they're getting the, the latest version. So they're getting it for 2010. And when the next uh, uh, version is released, uh, uh, which is codenamed Office 2012 or called Office 2012, they will get that as well, won't they? Yes, that's probably the, um, probably the uh, rights that they get under um, Office 365, under certain particular SKUs on Office 365. Yes, yes, yeah, absolutely. Just to, we should clarify that, shouldn't we? That uh, there are several different SKUs of Office 365, some of which come bundled with Office 2010, some of which, for example, just include the, the web apps. Absolutely, and that's actually uh, one of my top uh, reasons for moving to Office 365 for a small business. It allows you to give everybody access to the system so for example, what we see at the moment is lots of small businesses don't give uh, access to say email or to um, document sharing to maybe their, um, their shop clerks or something like that because it's a little bit too expensive. Office 365 allows you to give people purely what we call kiosk access, which is only a couple of pounds a month per person to actually provide them with access and suddenly it brings them into the organisation, it makes them much more part of the organisation, they can start to send and receive emails with everybody else. Mm. Okay, well let's mix things up. Um, Connor, uh, what is your top reason? The top reasons I'm seeing people moving uh, to Office 365 is one is probably the top one is to stabilise the costs or to predict the costs. Moving what is traditionally a CapEx venture over to a, an OpEx venture, so thereby fixing the cost for the organisation. And do you see that as uh, with your clients? Is that one of the things that's attracting you? There's definitely a, a, a strong driver in organisations that are stuck on, on older versions of, say, Microsoft technology or, or other pl platforms, and they're looking to do that upgrade. And Office 365 off offers them the opportunity to do that in, a, in, a cap, in an OPEX model. Okay, and what's your second reason? My second reason is the agility, how, how quickly you can, you can commission these services and, and how quickly you can add and scale up uh, the user. Um, and Connor, what's your second reason? My second reason is the flexibility you get with the solution, how quickly it is to commission it and how you can scale it uh, up and down. It's also you know, scaled over a 12-month period, so organisations can either scale up or down over, over those periods. And why do you think that's particularly applicable now? Well, most organisations we see are looking, looking for uh, cost reduction exercises, and uh, this, this allows them to help plan in a 12-month cycle rather than the usual three, five-year cycles that, that people uh, commission their equipment. Okay, and that means that uh, you, Simon, have the final word. Uh, so what's your final reason? I guess my, um, my final reason is actually going to draw on uh, two reasons that these guys have just given, and that is around integration. 
one of the really good things about Office 365 is that you don't have to throw out what you've already got. You can automatically integrate with your um, existing Exchange environment and your existing authentication environment if you want to. You can do it all afresh if you also want to, but there's also that option there. So you have a flexibility option. You also get a, the option of making everything um, comfortable for the end users. They're going to still be able to see uh, things in exactly the same way as they have before through, say, Microsoft Outlook. They're still going to be able to see people who are um, maybe left on premises on an email system while some are in the cloud, all as if they're one group of people. OK. Well, thank you, my panel of three experts you have delivered. Thanks, Tim. Thank you.